Hey, y'all. Y'all know what time it is. It's story time. <laughs> I just wanted to share with you uh, this situation that I had to learn how to heal from that I went through in hopes it'll help someone else as they're going through their dark night of the soul, their healing journey. So I started to have um, a a physical or intimate relationship with a coworker. Uh, I met him years back, like a couple of years back. Uh, we worked for the same company at the time um, um, and what have you. Okay. So that's, that's, that's the, that's how we met. Okay. We came to each other's, uh, facilities, uh, helped each other out. Um, he helped me out with a lot of questions that I had being the fact that he was with the company before I came and, you know, he just seemed like a real well-rounded person. He seemed that way. I'm probably sure he thinks the same way about me now that everything just all the shit then hit the fan. So fast forwarding, um, you know, we made plans to go bowling. That never happened. Um, you know, get up together and do just certain things. Some of those things happened. Some of those things did not. Um, I invited him to my home a couple times. Um, at that time, you know, we were intimate with, with each other. Um, so I have struggled with alcoholism, um, and just sometimes just not knowing when to say when sometimes just not knowing that I've had enough. And what happens is when you drink alcohol, it lowers your vibration, um, and if you drink too much, your 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 spirit actually detaches from you, and any type of entities that are around uh, or that you are attracting um, can actually take your vehicle, which is your body, for a ride. In other in other words, you don't you become something else. You become someone else. Uh, it's kind of like a, a possession. It's not an excuse, but it's just an explanation on what really happens in the spirit realm that people really need to understand. That's why when people black out, they don't remember what they've done or they've said, and they've done some really, really stupid, foolish things. That happens from time to time. And if you are empathic or open to some kind of channel, like some people can do that, and I am one of them, um, um, that can really be detrimental to, to you and to the people that you're around. So um, one of the times that he was at my house, things got out of hand. They got out of hand on my side with over drinking. And I straight up did a Will Smith across his face. That's what he said. I don't remember. Was I wrong for doing that? Absolutely. Um, you should never put your hands on someone unless you are defending yourself, um, fighting for your life, whatever the case may or may not be. So, um, we talked a little bit more about that. Of course, he was fire red hot, and I totally understood that. Um, but it's kind of like the spirit that that was was there and present, seeing knew his, knew that his spirit was deceptive in the same way that he didn't give a, a damn about me, which we're going to get into. He didn't give a damn about him. It, they recognized each other. Um, so... Things kind of fizzle out. Um, we talked a few more times. We saw each other a few more times, but it just wasn't the same. And, um, you know, naturally, he still had a grudge over that night. So, you know, I just went on about my way. He went on about his way. Um, I blocked him, um, and I stopped calling him, contacting him. Fast forward, a couple months later, down the line, I see him at, my, at the uh, winery and cigar place in my neighborhood. So naturally, I went up to him and I said, well, you know, I owe this man an apology. So I gave him one. Um, he forgave me. We, uh, he still had my number. I still had his, but his was just on block. Um, and later on that evening, we decided we were going to go to his house uh, and hook up again. Well... <laughs> That's what we did. I met his dad. His dad lives with him, uh, apparently. And, you know, there was so many different red flags. Like, um, 
you know, I remember one time we had a conversation where he was telling me about um, some of the things that he had experienced um, growing up and, and, and witnesses his, his parents doing um, as far as not being faithful in relationships, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, because he was discussing that with me at the time, this was like years ago when we were at the job, I thought he was discussing with me because it was something that he was not intending to repeat. Come to find out that was all he was about. This man had community dick for everybody. Um, He had, you know, he was dishonest about um, being married still being in a situationship with whomever. Um, he had women calling my phone, playing on my phone. And the reason why I say he had it, because he had the control to stop it. He had the control to be mature enough to say, hey, don't don't harass her. Let's let this go. Um, but they were calling on my phone and playing and texting me all types of night and calling and hanging up and leaving messages. And one day he and the, he and one of the females that called my phone uh, left me a message and it was like, uh, stop calling my man, baby, tell her you with me. And he's giggling in the background I'm with her and all this other stuff like a, like a, like a middle school child. One of the things I told him was that people are not perfect. So stop pointing the fingers and saying, Hey, well, you did this, you did that. Because had I known you were married, I would have never slept with you. Had I known you had situationships and community dicks for everybody, I wouldn't I wouldn't have slept with you. And you knew that. That's why you withheld that information. And so I was becoming upset because not only did he have people playing on my phone, he he's in the background giggling like a child. They calling me and texting me all times tonight. And it's different women now. Different. Laughing, I said, "Bitch, stop calling me." Oh, that wasn't me. That was y'all. <laughs> Just, I'm like, well, what the is going on here? What is going on here? So I started becoming upset, drinking away my emotions. I went to his. I went to his job a couple times because I wanted to look. I wanted to look that man in his face and know why he did what he did. Why did you feel the need to to I was good enough to sleep with, but I wasn't good enough to build with. I was good enough to uh, talk to from time to time, and then all of a sudden you ghosted. The calls got shorter. The call, the days got longer. The texts got shorter. Um, you know, the texts weren't answered. You know, shit like that. So, me naturally, I'm I'm trying to seek some answers to get some clear understanding about what just happened and to get some closure on it because obviously you didn't care enough about me, my feelings, uh, my emotional and my temple and my energy that I shared with you. I brought you to my sanctuary, not only my body, my mind, my spirit, my home. And this is how you're going to do me? And I thought we was friends. So anyway, I never got the closure that I was seeking, and I, I probably never will get it. Probably never will get it because, you know, folks don't like to admit when they're wrong, especially when they don't care. They're trying to get some get back or the narcissism kicks in. And like I said, if he was honest from the jump, I would have known that, hey, this is not what I'm looking for. This is not what I'm I'm, I'm, I'm interested in. I just want to have I just want to have sex with benefits. That's it. Friends with benefits. If he would have told me that, then I could have made a sound decision. Well, that's not what I want. I want to build with someone. I want a relationship. I'm not, uh, I'm young, but I'm old enough to know better. I have a 20-year-old son myself already. I don't have time to be in situationships, stuck with a child that you don't want, that I have to now raise or co-parent with you, or you ghost me on it. You ghosted me already. Imagine if I would have got pregnant by this man and this is the way that he did. But let me tell you what closure I did get. <clears throat> the last time that I went up there, I told myself I'm not going to spare his feelings. But I didn't put all our business out 
out there at that time at his job. But trust and believe I raised my voice because when I tried to talk to you, you didn't want to listen. You wanted to walk away because you didn't want to answer to the things that you did. You wanted to pretend like it didn't happen. You didn't want to step outside and talk to me, none of that stuff. The biggest flex when I went there is to see that he's still at that same company in that same position. And when I walked in, you know what he was doing? Sweeping floors with a push broom. Oh! I was cackling inside. I don't give a damn. You can call me petty. You can say whatever you want. In the time frame that we have been apart, which has been about a year and a half, Okay, since all this shit really fell apart and just all that back and forth, back and forth, I have gotten another job, two promotions and doubled my salary. And I'm not making fun of anybody who does does janitorial services because I have my own services that I do provide in that particular field. But you best best believe (laughs) if I provide them, I'm getting paid. That's why I got my pricing list. Check out Heavenly Hands Cleaning Service on her Facebook page, okay? Price and list is available as well, and it gives you steps and instructions on what to do and how to book an appointment, how to call and how to have a consultation. Anywho, that shit started to calm my spirit down because I was like, there's no growth. He hasn't done anything. You, you're not even a district manager in training yet. You've been with this company for a long time, long enough. There's no growth. You pushing floors. And you the store manager. Where's your crew? Where's your, where's what's going on? Um, that let me know that he's stagnant in life. And that if I would have actually kept chasing after closure, answers, him, I could have been stuck in life. I could have been stagnant because energy attracts energy. The only reason why I probably attract him because I was drinking. We both were drinking. All right. He just can hold his better. Um, and that I was on a low vibration. So if I was attracted to you, you was on a low vibration. You doing all that bullshit anyway, keeping secrets, telling lies, half truths, all that stuff. I could have been. In, in, in a situation with a man whom I would have repeated the cycle with when I just got out of a toxic relationship. I, he, he probably would have broke my heart. He made me pissed off. That's for shit show. But he probably would have broke my damn heart if I would have stayed chasing after him. The last thing I told that man was, you know what you did. And then I got the last laugh by seeing his ass pushing that motherfucker broom. And honey, whoo, the chuckles I had in that car, that drive home was so pleasant. Petty or not, pleasantry it was. And I got all the clothes that I need. So on the flip side of it, what I learned is don't chase after answers and apologies that if they weren't willing to give you because they see no error in their ways or if they do and they're too stubborn and prideful and a dickhead to give you one, then tell them to go fuck themselves and let that shit go. Put yourself first. Love yourself. Realize that if they can't see your worth doesn't mean you're not worth, doesn't mean that you're worthless. It means that you're not for them. Take those lessons that I learned. I learned that the main reason why I was chasing after someone who did not want me or did not want to face the music with me was because of the trauma that I needed to heal from, the dark night of the soul that I needed to heal from, the abandonment issues that I suffered from in my childhood. And when I got ghosted, that triggered me and brought up some old wounds that needed some loving, a loving touch, loving care and attention. And then I needed to work that out. Also, if they hide their shadow cells from you, that it doesn't mean it's not there. And it also doesn't mean that they have control over it. It means it hasn't been triggered yet. And when you trigger that bad boy, you're going to see a different side to that person and where they stop growing in life. So pay attention to that and the red flags.
There's so much more to this healing journey that I'm going to share with you guys. But for right now, that's enough. I hope it's clear in your atmosphere. I'm sending love and light to you, and I receive love and light. Take this um, from me as the learning lessons I learned and pull something from it if you've ever gone through that situation or you're going through that situation. And let me tell you, woman or man, you're going to be just fine. All right? Love and light.